Hello, I'm Liam Horan from Planet Youth, and I'm joined by Gina Dowd, who's an adolescent psychotherapist. And Gina, last Thursday night, we had the latest in our series of parenting your teenager through COVID-19 um, events online. And again, uh, I think it's fair to say another range of problems and challenges and things that people are doing well as well during COVID-19 came to the fore. I think so, Liam. It's like when we start all these discussions, people and parents give, give a long list of what the challenges are and, and what they think, you know, they're not doing so well and the, the issues that they're running into. But this, this group of, of parents highlighted very much, I think the word joy was used on several occasions, the joy of what they're actually doing well and the joy of what they're paying attention to. And this video today really is, is a series of looking at your parenting style because the, those parents gave me a lot of food for thought in terms of how they were approaching COVID, how they were approaching being a parent and what was actually going really well. Yes, and we're going to go through some of their questions now. I hope you can see on the screen there, Gina. Yes, yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. Some of the questions that came up, um, are you aware of your uh, values and beliefs? Or sorry, some of the questions that you, you would like to, I suppose, pose to parents who are in mm. this situation. Uh, and, and the question I think parents should be asking themselves are, as on the screen there, are you aware of your values and beliefs? Do you understand your parenting style? How does your child present in the world? Do you understand your top three priorities as a parent? And do you check in regularly to measure the challenges and the rewards of parenting your child? These are questions you think that parents should be asking themselves. Um, is that a demanding list of questions do you feel for parents in this, in this current time? No, I don't think it's a demand. I think the demand sometimes comes from what parents place on themselves, knowing the top tips of parenting, knowing how they should be doing it and how they should be getting it right. So in a way, I, I, I have flipped this discussion to ask them, to understand and have awareness and really appreciate whatever their value system is, whatever their belief system is, whatever their parenting style, because a lot I think that's come up in these discussions is what are other parents doing and am I getting it right? And what I'd like to draw parents' attention to is what they are actually doing well. And that we're always, I suppose, supporting adolescents to have faith in themselves. But I would like parents to have faith in, in the good day, in the bad day, in the next day. And that involves whatever your values are as a parent. And often when we think of tips and tools, uh, I think the magic number to come up with are, are your three priorities um, and understanding what those are so that you can stick to them, so that you can have flexibility in them. And then that you're regularly checking in what you did well on a day or in a moment. And that's very, very important to do. And when you talk about your values and beliefs, is it your point that they don't change very much, even if conditions around your circumstances change? Is that what you're trying to get at there? Yes, it's about, we're all influenced by the world in various ways. And, you know, as a parent, you're, either going to compare yourself or, or your child or your adolescent is going to compare for you. You know, John has this, Mary has this, such and such can do this. And as we know now from listening to all the parents, the influence of social media, um, everybody on social media is doing well and they all have a great life and they're amazing and they're all happy and they're all good looking as well. And I think the, the, the stress there for parents is sometimes to doubt their own abilities and to doubt whatever their value system is. St stay true to it. When you stay true to it, you have flexibility in it. You're able to negotiate and debate and, and there's wriggle room for change. But, you know, whatever your core value is, and it may be, I would like my, my, my child to show up with good manners. I would like my child to have respect for themselves and for others. I, I would like my child to never be racist or sexist. I would like my child to have faith in themselves. These are all values. 
And a value I may have may be important to me for whatever reason. And I would like to instill that in my child or my adolescent. Hold on to that. It doesn't mean your, your child or your adolescent is going to follow it to the T, but they're going to know that my parent has something that's really important to them. And so I can integrate with it. I can understand it. I can have flexibility. I can have a discussion. And then I'm able to stand over something and I'm going to say, well, maybe this is something I was brought up with. Maybe this is something I decided, you know, as a young adult. But to me, it represents who I am. It represents how I'm rearing my child, how I would like them to go out in the world. And they're really core values that, 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 that hold you and they keep you steadfast in your parenting style. So it's important to be aware of them and hold on to them. And that comes into your own beliefs as well. So when you say top three priorities as a parent, are there practical priorities you're talking about? Well, if you move into the next slide, Liam, what, what I've got there is questions for parents and, and adolescents. And, and, and I've borrowed the business of parenting from a, another adolescent therapist. But when we understand our parenting role, we, you can see there's a list there in front of you. Check in regularly, consult with others, seek support, look at your child, avoid comparisons, have fun. So today is Tuesday. So what's, what's my priority today? And it, it may be that my priority today is to, to try and be calm in myself, to try and do something with a little bit of ease. But if I have three things in my head um, and, and I hold on to them for the day or for the week, then I can better understand my parenting role and in turn better understand my child. Because your child presents to school, your child presents to all their activities, but nobody knows your child as well as you do. And nobody knows that personality that we know from psychologists and from research now, you know, the personality traits are there at age three. And some parents would often say to me, they came out in the world like this, or they arrived into my home like this, and this is how they've been and it's never changed. So when you understand your, your top three priorities, then you can better deal with their frustrations. You help and you don't hinder them. You, you might prioritize that, that sorry is a very important word. And then you stay with your values. You can be proud of them. But you're really remembering who you are and who they are. Okay. And we can have lists of things we need to get done. You know, it's a, the lists really are only for shopping. That's the only time we need a list. And when they decide to change around Tesco's and super value or whatever, you definitely need your list. But for everything else, if you, if you look at, you know, the world over, it's usually three things that we relate to that, that, that we can hold in our mind and hold in our focus. And then what that supports as a parent is your expectations of yourself your expectations of your child, and it keeps it in balance because sometimes our expectations of ourselves or our child are too high. Sometimes they're too low. So when we look at what's mine and what's ours, we're looking at the contact we have, how, how we communicate. We're looking at what we're trying to prevent, which is harm. We're looking at the possibility that the, this child and adolescent has. We're looking at where, where we show up and where we take ownership and we're looking at, very importantly, what we can share together as a parent with your child, as a parent with your family. Because when we go out in the world, there's so many rules. There's so many ways you're expected to be. There's norms, there's risk, there's safety. And we often have to slot into that. But we can only slot into that when we know who we are. And in COVID-19, I know earlier on this series, we were saying to parents, be easy on yourself. Don't set too high expectations for a day or mm. for a son or daughter because everything is up, you know, mm. out of kilter right now. Yeah. Um, given that we're a few months into the lockdown now and it's been, it's been relaxed a little bit, what, I know it's a, general, a very general question. Yeah. What do you feel now? Do we need to start setting higher expectations again now, get back to normal living, or are we still in the, the aftermath of the lockdown? Well, we're trying to parent now still with COVID-19 in, in our psyche and part of our world now probably forever. 
and, and we know, you know, in whatever number of years it may be replaced by some other pandemic. There's always a crisis in the world. You only have to look to America and what's happening at the minute and how people are responding to unfair treatment and what they're doing. So at the minute, as a parent, you're still going through COVID-19. Yes, we have adjusted and parents have adjusted very well. So the initial shock is over. But now it's the settling into what do you need life to look like? What have you learned from this experience? If you have relaxed your expectations a little bit, can you carry that on while guiding your child and adolescent that, yes, school will be back, decisions will need to be made, but how you can do that with caution, with ease, because parents are still trying to guide children to have social distancing, to have all these new rules. And, you know, shops haven't fully opened yet. Restaurants haven't fully opened. So each thing is, is a new step in the COVID-19 parenting role. And it comes back to trust your parenting style, give a little bit of faith and trust to your adolescent, renegotiate, renegotiate, renegotiate. All the adolescents I'm meeting at the minute want to be out and about. Some of their friendships have changed. Some of their style has changed. Some of their ownership has changed. So it's like adolescents have suddenly taken this big leap and children in their developmental process because they've been forced into that. Some have become more inhibited. Some have become a lot more directional as we've heard from all the baking and cooking. So look to your child and adolescent, how are they showing up? And now where do you guide them? Because maybe as a parent, you're out of work. Maybe you have more stress. Maybe you have learned that this was a good time for you and it's different for everyone, but nothing will be the same. And so everybody has adjusted and changed and, and people have, have lost relatives. They've gone through massive grief. Our society as a whole has gone through that. So when you faith in yourself, you're more tuned in to joy and spontaneity. When you have confidence in yourself, you're more aware of how to embrace a challenge and how to change. And the world over has shown that with COVID. And Ireland as a country has, has shown that. We, we have done extremely well and we have followed the rules. For a nation of people who aren't great at following rules, you know, we've done pretty good. And yes, there, there's been a little bit of breakout, shall we call it, recently, and we all have our own opinions on that. But what's happening in your home? What's going well? What do you want the next three months to look like? You might be worried about your child or, or your adolescent going back to school. And yes, they will have to adjust back to rules and expectations again. But I, I think they will with your guidance and with your support. Okay. What to name and what to tame. This is something I know you believe in a lot about mm. controlling what you can control and being explicit about what, it, what does matter, uh, but also part of not trying to tame what you can't tame as well. It, it, it's very, this, I've put this in a few slides because I suppose I could talk about this all day, Liam, and I could talk about it in so many different ways. We get into trouble when we're not naming what's happening in that amazing brain of ours. And I think I've given a lot of slides on the brain and explained how we get triggered, how we live down in the basement. And if we're not naming that, well, you know what? I'm a bit worried at the minute. I'm a bit scared. Then we can't tame anything because we carry that round in our body, in our psyche. And that's what leads to anxiety. Anxiety is amalgamation of fear, pressure, um, and sadness in, in, in my mind. And when you combine that all together and you don't talk about it and you, you don't deal with it, it, it j just explodes. And then we get all these different terms from anxiety. And we know all our services under pressure in supporting adolescents at the minute and, and all the services, you know, both public and private, they do a good job. But it comes back to, how as a person can I support myself to deal with something that is an inevitable part of life? Fear and panic has happened with COVID-19. I would be interested in all those people that were, were panicking in the beginning about getting sick, about losing their job. Where are they um, you know, 11 weeks down the line now? Where has that worry gone? 
Is it as big as it was? Has it increased? Is it actually smaller? How does the future look? And often we have to do that check-in with ourselves as a parent and with adolescents so that we can say, well, look, you were worried about this six weeks ago and you know, how are you thinking about it now or what is actually happening? How am I feeling about it now? And, and everybody, no matter what industry we're in at the minute, or what line of work you're in has gone through huge changes. There's no one not been affected by COVID-19. And if that is for, for the world, it's, it's for every parent, every child, and every adolescent. Everybody has been impacted. But now we're in a position of hope. Our death rate is down. Um, contact tracing has improved. So can we foster a little bit of curiosity now? Can, can we think about, well, I, I still have dreams for the future. My adolescent, my child still has dreams. How do I support that? While taming their panic, their fear, their anxiety about going into secondary school, about moving into sixth class, all the changes that come. New teachers, new curriculum, new way of doing school. And we don't have all the information yet. So there's more information to come. There's more changes to come. So it... I would be saying, you know, this all needs to be paced and trust your parenting staff. Okay. Um, in terms of tame and, and, how, and how we can get out of control mm. if you don't tame things, are there any particular things people should do on a daily basis to, to check themselves, as you say? Do any, any, and I know you're not a person for tips and strategies per se, but we all know the ability of our mind to go off way beyond where we wanted to go yes yes the only thing we can control is our mind we can't control anything in society as COVID-19 has proven to us it's all m m most things are out of our control so if you think of controlling your mind you think of become acquainted with yourself become acquainted of the worries that you carry how old are those worries? And I've touched on this before, but apparently we have about 66,000 thoughts a day. They can't all be new ones. Most of them are old ones that keep reappearing. So can you begin to notice when an old worry comes up? And can you observe and make a choice or make a decision then, okay, this is not happening right now. This is some way way off in the future because the place we often oscillate between is, is the future and the past. And a lot of the parents spoke about being present. And what, what does that actually mean as uh, being present? Pay attention to what you're being told in here. Check it out. Is it helpful or is it harmful? Move forward with compassion for yourself and your child and adolescent, because then you're going to make good decisions. If it's a bad day, acknowledge it, say sorry. Tomorrow is another day. The, the, the rest, we're, we're half three today. We have another, another lot of hours left in the day. So there are more things I can do. Mistakes, getting it wrong is an inevitable part of parenting. We haven't done this before, whether you have one child, whether you have 10 children, everything is different. Your parenting style changes sometimes from week to week, from year to year, because you're growing and changing. So it's all about pressing that pause button. Check this out. Helpful, harmful. Pause, take a breath, proceed with mindfulness. You know, and, and, and then you, you, like there's, the, there's that um, amazing word, uh, word, think. And it stands for, T is for, you know, think. H is for, is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? And they are the thoughts we have in our head. So if we're having a thought, ooh, I wonder. And if it's a harmful one, uh, no thank you. And to, to, to take that entitlement on yourself to do that, 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 that you can head, head them off of the past, so to speak. Yes, we can check in with a child and adolescent and ask them what is wrong, unless we have checked in with ourselves. Because, you know, the adolescent language is monosyllabic. Fine. Okay. Grand. Sometimes. And as a parent, you, you, you're standing at the edge there wondering, you know, am I going to be invited into this space or am I going to be kept out today? So how am I feeling about my child and adolescent today? What am I noticing? 
what's my response and what's my reaction and okay. it's all about that checking in okay gina dowd adolescent psychotherapist thank you for joining us lots more on planetyouth.ie and various upcoming events as well for parents and young people in Galway, Roscommon and Mayo in the West of Ireland. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Liam.